Good morning, everybody, or in other parts of the world. Good evening, good afternoon. I know where Shanti is. It's the evening, right? <laughs> yeah, it's 6 p.m. <laughs> it is 11 a.m. here in Atlanta, Georgia, on the East Coast of the United States. So, And I'm so excited to have you back, Shanti, because we are going to talk today about something that a lot of you guys asked us to to elaborate on and i'm so excited you did ask us to elaborate on this because this is fascinating and that is spider medicine or spider magic whichever one you want to you want to call it and the reason why if this is the first time you're tuning in to this channel first of all welcome second of all if you're like why are they talking about spider medicine in our last episode that shanti and i filmed together we she talked about being bitten by a black widow and i said i had been bitten by a brown recluse and these are two very poisonous spiders, but they they uh, kind of give you what what you said, transform or die. They're kind of the, the animal that's going to kind of bring your feet to the fire spiritually. And I think I know as well as you, Shanti, studying in India and studying in these older cultures of healing and, and transformation, a lot of times sicknesses, injuries, all that kind of stuff are not what we perceive them to be in the West. They're actually a welcome exactly. thing because they force you to change. And so yes, absolutely. that's what we're going to start absolutely. with today. And how are you, Shanti? How's everything going with you in South Africa? I'm wonderful. Thank you. It's warm. The weather is still warm. We had a very late summer. So very happy. Uh, things are still um, cool. We haven't had any major crises in terms of anything except um, what we're hearing about in the Suddenly, South Africa wants to get involved. It's like, no, guys, trust me, you do not want to get involved with people, not with our army. <laughs> but it's did, funny. Did you see our um, state yeah, of look, the so union? Far, so good. Did you see that? I might have to bleep some of these words out, guys, but I'm just going to say it anyway. Shanti, did you see clips from the state of the last night where he. No, I didn't. He talked about the UK, but he called them the Iranian people. <laughs> What is going on? I mean, are we talking an old clip here or are we talking no, someone was, a little bit of... Night. So he, I think it was last night. Someone can correct me down in the comment section if I'm not correct on that. That he gives to the nation. And he was talking about the Ukraine, the situation. And instead of calling them the Ukraine, he called them the Iran. Wow. That's what you get when it's you something... mail order and a president. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> that's basically what happened. It was like a mail order bride. It was a mail order president. So, um, <laughs> who's got dementia? Wow, that's um, insane. Yeah. So it's really a joke. I mean, come really, on, that's a joke. I mean, no. I mean, it was. It was the state of the. I mean, I. I am under the impression that. James Woods or somebody else because yeah. it doesn't look anything like the, and we know for a fact that the Tyler Perry studio down here in Atlanta is being utilized because they have a on there. I have an insider there. So part of me believes that whatever actor is playing this role is doing a damn good job, keeping it comical for those of us who are awake and trying to wake people up for those of us who are still asleep because what the dude farted in, in the Vatican city, like, didn't he like poop his pants or something in front of like the hologram poker? I heard movie? that. You know, I heard that. Yeah. He's constantly goofing up on camera. Um, so it's like, come on, you guys. Like, and of course, we see the inflation, we see all this stuff going on. It's trying to wake people up about you got to be careful about who you vote for. But anyway, so basically, our president here in the United States. So, apologies to both countries. Most Americans do know the difference between the Ukraine. Apologies to the people of these two countries. I promise you, again, most Americans do know the difference between the two. So that is funny. That is funny. That is funny. It I'll really you, is funny. When we get off, I'll send you the clip. <laughs> so oh, please do because I would love to actually post that on something. I think it's on <laughs> even my even though I have been it on Twitter. Uh, yeah. I'll oh wow. Okay. And there's one like, I think yeah, Schumer's like claps and then like sits down because he realizes the speech isn't over. Like it was just like a, a comedy of errors. And it's supposed to be <laughs> one of the most important addresses to the nation. Like it's supposed to be super formal, but it literally was a comedy of errors. So <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it. That's for sure. My word. 
<laughs> so well, let's hope that, 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 that this joke is over soon because it really is. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's, it's time. crazy. It's time. The, yeah. the curtain the finale needs to happen. So, but anyway, um, as I've been talking about, we've been talking about this a lot, Shanti, and our friend Kevin Edwards have, has spoken about this. Like, you know, we are going into this new timeline. And so for all of us, it is literally about taking accountability of your own life, your own vibration. And, 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 and if we all did that collectively, I think we would move, move faster into this new timeline. And that kind of brings us back to the spider medicine or spider magic. Um, because again, guys, when you hear someone gets bitten by a brown recluse or a black widow, those are serious spider bites. Those are not just spider bites that you can ignore. Like they have to be treated. They have to be, um, it, it's literally like, um, you know, the big, big girl spider bite when it comes to, to those types yeah. of, of, of bites. So, so once again, tell people a little bit about if they weren't here for the last episode, which guys, I will place a link to the last episode down in the description box below if you missed it. But what happened again, you were bitten by a, a black widow, right? Correct. Yeah. I was bitten by black and it's on my left hip actually. And, uh, and, and again, I always talk about um, each part of the body really means something. You yeah. know, and when we get, I mean, I, that's also one of the courses that I teach as well. It's like understanding how the different chakras relate to different body parts. And again, we understand each of the body parts mean something. So at the time I had breast cancer in my right breast and I was bitten by a black widow spider on my left hip. And if, I've still got a scar, maybe two inches long on my left hip there, which is one of my badges of honor. I don't want to ever ha lose that one because it's a constant reminder of um, instant change that I had to go through. And literally um, how I knew because I felt this thing, uh, I was lying in bed with my partner and I was like, what the hell? I felt, I was half asleep, jumped up, hit it. And there it was. And I knew it was a, that spider because it, I got it and it was dying. And I said, what the hell kind of spider is this? And he said to me, oh my gosh, that looks like a black widow. Now in South Africa, black widows are not very common at all. So I was like, no, come on. And then um, it turned out that it was. But before that, and, and I said to this, the, 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 and, and I just, I held it. And I knew I was like, do or die right now. And I just took my one hand um, and I just, literally pummeled energy into my hip and I stopped the spread of whatever it needed to, to be spread. It was like something I did automatically. It wasn't even a thought process. It was just something I knew how to do. And then as I held it there, I said, what is the lesson you're trying to teach me? And it was a female. And she said to me, transform or die. And it was, just in that moment, and of course, I'm an animal whisperer, including an insect whisperer <laughs> and every whisperer. <laughs> and um, I knew at the time that I just had discovered the, 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 the lump in my right breast, which I refused to have treated mm -hmm. um, as well through medical, traditional medicine and stuff like that. I just knew I could fix it myself. And um, I understood that I was very angry. I understood that my, my issues with the male, my own male energy, which was obviously very imbalanced, um, was creating issues with my male partners and other males in my well, partner, one partner in my life, but previous partners as well that I'd had and male energy in general. I did not like them very much at the time. In my opinion, they were all idiots who were here to hurt women and to destroy the planet. And that was my perception. Mm -hmm. Although I had a very loving father, very, you know, as, I, as I've said before, my father was known as a gentle giant. But obviously, as a husband to my mom, they had their issues, which I don't want to go into. But, you know, that's, that's my mother's story to tell if she ever wants to tell it. But for me, as a, as a father, he was amazing. And to all my other siblings as well, I know he was an amazing father, but as my mom's partner, he certainly had his shortcomings, you know. So, of course, I would then perceive men because I always say, you know, when, when a child is born, the two people that you look up to is your mother and your father. So your mom represents the feminine 
and your father represents the masculine. Mm -hmm. So one would kind of mold your ideas and opinions on men and women based on your parental unit. So for me, obviously, observing that gave me that idea as well about what men were like. So there was always a great contrast for me in the, in the partners I chose, you know. Um, they were either there uh, spiritually and emotionally, but physically they were in a very far way away. They were working away or always away from home or had jobs or whatever. And if I was close to them physically, then emotionally or spiritually, they were miles away. So I could never find that balance for me, you know, and I was not quite at the stage then that I, that I am now in understanding how my own attraction around that created that. Yeah. So this gave me the understanding of what that was about. So through this spider medicine, but also I want to just say, when Hannes, my partner, was killed, and that was at the end of 96, <clears throat> I got another spider bite, and I must say, I don't know what spider that was, um, on my right butt, like on the sort of, it was more like on the side, not butt, butt, but more like on the side of my leg, sort of touching my butt type of thing. And um, I remember I was driving from Johannesburg to Cape Town where my parents lived at the time. It was over Easter, April. Uh, March, April, and it was the worst drive, and it's a very long drive. It's like 1,800 or 2,000 kilometers. So I had to sleep over at a friend on the way there, and then it was just like so, so sore. And I remember going and ha having to go to the doctor as well um, and literally have them slice it open and do whatever. It was I was in tears. I was crying, crying, crying. It was so, so painful. Um, so at that time was the first major spider bite I got as well. Spiders often tend to give me a little nip here and there. Um, well, not anymore, actually, not since the, the Black Widow. But um, that was also a massive transformational time for me was when I got that one. And it couldn't have been very poisonous, I don't think, although any spider bite is not nice, you know. But... Um, um, the very poisonous one was the black widow for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah. We have a lot so of that black was, widows down here in Georgia. Like people are very familiar with black widows. And then I know like in South Africa, you guys have obviously have a lot. I've been to Africa twice. I've been to South Africa and Zimbabwe. And all the times we'd have to sleep under like the, the nets and stuff. But there are similarities because down here in Georgia, we do have a lot of spiders, a lot of snakes that as a kid, we had to learn rhymes about poisonous snakes. So we would be able to, to spot the poisonous ones, but, uh, but black widows, those are like no joke. Like those are serious spider bites. If you get bitten by it, but it's almost like, you know, you know, you, it's, you're saying like, Oh, you know, it's not, it's not, it's, it's not normal down here, but it's almost like when you are that person that it's almost kind of like an anointing. Nature's annoying, yeah. though. Even though we see it as something, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, crap, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, it's poison, it's poison, it's venom. But it's almost like, no, you've been given almost an elixir from yes. spirit in that sense. That's truly what I felt. You know, I must say the, 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 first, uh, the first bite I got, I wasn't as familiar with that energy mm -hmm. as I am now because it was literally Hannes' death that catapulted me yep. into doing the work that I, that I do today. So when I look back, I can completely understand what that medicine was as well. You know, the right side is really the masculine side of the body. So you assert yourself, you step forward, you walk your path now. So for me, that was spider saying, come on, you know, walk. Because really what the spider teaches us, the spider medicine is to become the keeper of your own destiny, yeah. so to speak. You know, when you're looking at the, 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 the medicinal qualities of that is you're now becoming the master and the keeper of your own destiny so do what you need to do take action the right side of your body is the action side you know action take action walk it step it walk that path take that road do it do it you have the you have what everything you need within you you are the master of your own destiny you can do this you can make a difference and when you just look at the beautiful web they spin as well isn't it i mean 
To me, that the spider's web is, it's like the web of light. It connects everything and everyone. Okay, you know, when you look at it, now it's going to catch the, its prey as well. I look at it in a, in a different way as well. I see it as connecting us all. This, we are connected through this thread, this, this web of love and this web of light. So, yes, we all connect through that web and it's how we connect with each other. Yes. So, for me... That, that's, a, that's a big, big symbolism of it. So to really take action, move in the direction that you needed to move in, and you are part of the divine web. So yeah. there's nothing to fear. You've got everything you need. It's all within you. Yeah. So for me, that was the initial, the initial anointing of the spider medicine. Now I didn't, I wasn't like Spider-Man because if you look at the movie Spider-Man, right? Mm -hmm. uh, wasn't Spider-Man also bitten by, by a spider or something? Yeah. In, and he like, the yeah, and then he was able to use, like he could throw the things out. Like, yeah. Something. And then he, yeah. I, I was definitely not climbing up walls and stuff. So don't worry about that. I was not, I was not doing that thing. Uh, wouldn't that but be I cool? Was wouldn't that be cool? If that was, I don't know, like, <laughs> no. so that was definitely but yeah. yeah so that for me was the initial anointing as you say of the spider it's so funny because i told you in the last episode that when i had I, I didn't even realize i think i might have told you this off air when we were filming on monday or something that m the brown recluse spider bite i got was literally right at my Saturn return. And I had to go back and think about that because at that point I was not familiar with all of this um, underst deeper understanding of sicknesses, injuries, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, holy crap, that happened right around the time that everything shifted in my life. And so it was kind of like an anointing. And I actually, because if you guys saw the last episode, I got bitten on my left butt cheek. Uh, the spider had gotten into my jeans and I like literally... Yeah, it got into my jeans. I had a whelp on my- Was it a boy? I know, it probably was a boy spider, yeah. <laughs> he should have just taken me out to dinner. I could not resist that. <laughs> very, very naughty boy. But he could have just taken me out to dinner. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say. I didn't know because I had, I, I've had i been bit by spiders a lot. Like I said, growing up, up, growing up in Georgia, we would get spider bites all the time. You'd wake up with like a whelp and it was fine. You just left it. So I had this like whelp on my ass, basically, that just kept getting bigger because I left it. And I didn't think, I thought I had just hit myself or something. And when I started to get really sick, I got a bad fever. I started hallucinating. That's when I was brought to the doctor. And that's when they they saw that well, but I don't know how it came up, but in any way, and they, it was, it was a spider bite and they had to lance it as well and cut out the part. And I, and it was so painful, even though they put the lidocaine in or the, or whatever it's called, the uh, numbing stuff. I think lidocaine's for the mouth. Yeah. Whatever. It, yeah. it didn't, it didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. Uh -uh. It, it hurt anything. like hell. And, and all this like yeah. gunk came out and, and, um, and I told you guys in the last episode that the doctor assured me that it was lucky I'd been bitten on my, my butt because it was a fatty area that therefore the venom, <laughs> venom didn't spread that fast. And I was like, are you calling me a fat ass? Like I was so offended <laughs> besides not looking at the bright side of the fact that if I had been on my arm or my leg, it would have been horrific. You know, I was like, oh my God, he's calling me a fat ass because he literally just had to do surgery <laughs> on my ass basically um, but i have a scar there now and it's so vulnerable right on your I, butt you like you literally ass up like like <laughs> and, and i'm watching like all this stuff because it wasn't like you know you didn't they didn't take you under they just numbed it and i'm like watching all this like stuff come out and the worst thing was i had to go stay i i moved back to Georgia from California. And I had to go stay at my parents' house because my mom and God bless mothers. Cause I don't know any other human being in the world that would do this for their child, but a mother, she had to take salt, like Epsom salt and rub it in the womb just to make sure it would heal. Like I would have to sit there and let my mother like put this salt into this womb on my ass cheek just to make sure it was healing properly. I had to go stay at their house for a while. But, um, I still have that scar there. And, and uh, this morning, this was what I'm, that was 12 years ago. So this morning before we were filming, I like actually have a long mirror. I actually like dropped my pants and like examine that scar again, just to be like, hello, buddy, there you are. Cause yes, it was, it was a badge of honor and it totally, that area, that time totally transformed and really brought me yeah. into a deep, deep place of self, uh, self healing. I'd already been practicing yoga and all that kind of stuff, but once you go through that Saturn return and shit gets real, 
um, that's when I started to go through my real dark night of the soul and really trying to pull up all that darkness. And so I understand what that brown recluse was doing. It was it was transitioning me into a path that I needed to go on. And so it, it is an anointing in a sense. It is something that shouldn't Absolutely. be looked at as bad or scary, but an opportunity um, from I love that. transform Absolutely. or die. Like you're going to have to transform or die. Take your pick. The choice is you yours. Know we, uh, uh, the that spot about the first one I got as well after Hannes was killed, absolutely that was my Saturn return too. I was 29 years old, so Hannes got killed at my Saturn return. So that was my Saturn return, and also that that transform that moment of transformation because spiders are all about transformation. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at they've got eight legs, eight is the number of transformation. So it really is transforming into a greater place. And I know there are so many people that are terrified of spiders and they will kill them at the first opportunity. I want to tell you, everyone who comes into my house knows if my gardener comes here and works in the garden, the first thing he gets told if he was a new guy, you do never kill a spider. In this, in this place, we do not kill things. So not anything um, unless it's obviously attacking you or something, then of course you have a right to defend yourself. Right. It's like hornets or wasps or whatever, and there are some of that, then you do have a right to defend yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. But we do not kill anything. So it's a great rule in my house that no spider gets killed, no nothing gets killed. I don't even kill ants, you know. I'll yeah. just sweep them up and throw them outside and yell at them because they're irritating me because they're always in my cat's bowls. <laughs> so, so, you know, that's, that, that, but that's about the extent of it. Mm -hmm. So definitely, you know, that satin, that, that tra moment of transformation. And, I, and if ever anything was it was a catalyst for my transformation it was Hannes's death for yeah. sure that was absolutely the path the the path I took um at the time that that um I could be a victim um and be another another statistic in this country of someone who suffered crime and be angry about it for the rest of my life or I yeah. could choose to use that as beautiful medicine for myself and then take those steps and move forward and and go with the healing rather you know because that's what it is it really is also about it's about understanding that you walk your own destiny you know yeah. you 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 walk your own path and you are a master of your own destiny yeah so it's great anyone out there who's had a spider bite um and decided to kill them or hate them after that or be terrified of them mm -hmm shift that perception you know if you have dreams about spiders as well that's usually a great great beautiful spiritual symbolism that change is coming into your life yeah you know and that and that you should go with the change even if it's scary because if you look at spiders how how scared so many people are of them because they yeah. can be very creepy yeah. i mean i tell you, i've got lots of rain spiders and they they're all over my house especially after it's rained i go buddy you're not coming to, to run over me tonight when I'm sleeping, okay? You're welcome to stay on the wall, but you do not run over me when I'm, when I'm sleeping. Do we have a deal? <laughs> so, and I'm not a So we have this conversation. Way. I, I don't kill any spiders either. I we I know this is gross, but here in Atlanta we have a problem with roaches. Like especially if you live in the city, you have you have. I put I take them outside. Like I put them on a little paper and take them outside. Like I mm. don't I don't kill bugs ever. I, I do not kill any type of spiders. I even when they get stuck like in the bathtub, I will do everything I can to get the spider yeah. out of the bathtub before I do my shower because. I don't want to kill it. It's not my place to take that life. Um, but yeah, and even after being bit by that spider, it's it's so. But I love that. I I, we're, I was speaking about this yesterday. It's kind of like we we go through this debate between dharma and free will, dharma and free will. And I actually believe in both because what dharma is giving you are these obstacles, are these obstacles, these events that happen in your life that then give you the choice. Like this is going to happen yeah. to you. How are you going to respond Just, to it? If you don't mind, explain to the viewers what Dharma is because it's more like your fate, right? It's yeah, it's like your, your life path. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, you see, you hear the term Dharma spoken about in the Bhagavad Gita, really. And that's kind of where we first hear the, the, the idea of yoga, too, is the Bhagavad yeah. Gita. Um, and, and for those who are not familiar with the Bhagavad Gita, it's basically Arjuna, this warrior, is standing on the front line of battle and he's having like a meltdown. 
like a come to Jesus moment temper tantrum because all of a sudden he's looking across and how apropos is that for what we're living through right now in our timeline, he's standing, he's looking across the battlefield and he sees his teachers, his friends, his family, people that he has loved in his life that now he has to go to war against. And so he has this like mental breakdown and the avatar of God that appears to Arjuna is Krishna, um, who was Govinda as a child, the one that had the universe, mother saw the universe inside of him. And Krishna is basically the whole Bhagavad Gita is Krishna having this conversation with Arjuna, basically telling him to toughen up buttercup. Like this is, you're a warrior. This is your Dharma. This is your path. You have to do this. Um, my dog, my dog who is from India is agreeing right now. If y'all can hear him barking out there. Uh, he's, he's from India. He's agreeing. Um, and so <laughs> I can get it. That's so cool. He's kind of giving you, and you know, when people often think of like yoga as just being all light and love, you have to then go back and look at the Bhagavad Gita because no part of finding that light, finding that unconditional love is going through that dark night of the soul. And so obstacles come. And so it's so amazing. So your Dharma is your life path. Your Dharma is basically okay. the courses that you, you sat down before you took this life and sat with God and your, your spirit guides and you created a course list of things you were going to experience as a human. And then when these experience ha when these opportunities happen, your free will comes on how you react to that. And so, um, so it's like, like I always say, like I had the habit of dating really awful men throughout my 20s. And I ended up getting myself into a very abusive relationship with a narcissist. I almost lost my life one night. I got one night and that situation could have sent me on a tailspin of again hating men you know really having some issues and yes i do have some anxiety from that obviously but instead i took myself through major trauma therapy i realized at that moment that the reason why i kept going getting into these bad relationships was because something wasn't healed in me and I knew that 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 issue started in childhood. I knew where it started. And so I it took me a while. I found a great trauma therapist. I know people are funny about therapy. Some therapists are really, really good. This trauma therapist was very, um, uh, very educated in, in yoga and the Eastern philosophies and did talk to me about past lives. And we did EMDR therapy, rapid eye movement. And through that trauma therapy, through my own practice of yoga and really facing that, really sitting there and saying, why did I get myself in this situation? What needs to be, instead of saying it's his fault, it's his fault, it's his fault, men are awful. What am, as Shanti says, what am I doing to bring this into my life? What is not healed in me? What is, what am I, what, am I, what do I need to learn from this? And I tell people all the time that situation that I was in with this man that I literally almost lost my life one night, first time I'd ever really called 911 was this situation was one of the, you could see it as bad, but for me in my perspective now was one of the most amazing things that happened to me because it sent me down a path of healing, of real healing yeah. and being, and having that courage to actually go through that. So that's where the free will lies. What are you going to do with it? Transform or die your choice, transform or die. Because if you again, look at the eight legs, okay. Um, which is, and if you look at the number eight, turn it on its side, it's the symbol of infinity. Mm -hmm. So it brings in that balance mm -hmm. where you now get to balance and understand that true creation is embracing the shadow aspect of who you are as well. Understanding that you are drawing that shadowy aspect of, in our particular instance, the masculine energy, which we ourselves had not healed. Yep. So we therefore then would draw the aspects of unhealed men or partners, um, our, always our perception, remember, it's always our perception of that into our lives. And what are we going to do with that? Are we just going to then get the imbalance where we see everything as bad as negative and become these uh, vigilante women that go out and, you know, whatever? Or do we understand that that is part of us? Because when we embrace that part of creativity, because as I said in our, one of our previous talks as well, Mm -hmm. We come here to understand what we are not, yeah. okay? We, true consciousness, when we out there in, in, with God and in the heavenlies or whatever you want to call it in the, in, the, in the great consciousness, we understand that we just love. Mm -hmm. We come here to experience 
And I don't believe there's an opposite of love. But for layman's terms, let's call it fear. Mm -hmm. Okay? Fear being false evidence appearing real. Isn't things like spiders and snakes of our greatest fears? Mm -hmm. Snakes represent, I mean, snake is the kundalini snake, mm -hmm. right? Yep. It coils up the spine when you are ready for transformation. When, when, when your body fires the codes and yes. kundalini says, okay, we're ready for this. And then she then coils up the spine, reigniting all our nerve endings and our neurons in the brain and reigniting the kundalini within the cells of our body that therefore gets us ready for expansion and therefore transformation. Yeah. So snakes and spiders actually have a very similar energy within the human consciousness, if we choose to see it that way, they can also be our death. They are both very poisonous as well and both very transformative at yeah. the same time. So it's really about, if we look at the leg, it's about weaving our own reality. Mm -hmm. We have the opportunity of weaving our own reality into that beautiful web of light where we connect through telepathic, beautiful consciousness to all our beautiful family and tribes and friends like for example we have i mean yeah we are you're in georgia i or atlanta i'm here I'm, uh, two completely different time zones but here we are we are able to connect and we have woven our beautiful web of light so that we can meet and talk and have beautiful conversations or we can catch everything in the web and just kill it because we just want to eat it and consume it. And, and, and I mean, if you look at the Harry Potter movies, look at that big spider. Oh, wasn't that the creepiest spider you ever saw, that huge thing? <laughs> that just, you know, spins everyone up in a cocoon and paralyzes them and, you know, eats them at their own will. That yeah. you can do as well, you know, if you've got spider medicine. But I choose not to do that. So we can have, it's, it's about finding the opposing forces of that eight, first the eight, eight legs, okay, when it's on its side, it's the infinity sign and the human energy system looks like that, okay, which moves through the chakras in that way. So you are either going to then balance yourself, embrace creativity, weave, weave yourself another reality and understand that the dark is as important, the dark is as important as what the light is, because without the dark, you do not know your light. You do yeah. not understand that contrast between having the choice to live or die. I had the choice to live or die in that moment. And I've had not just that. I mean, I've got very close calls with car accidents, for example, racing down the highway, you know, and not looking where I'm going at certain times and, God only knows how I am still here. And sounds accident. I've never had an accident. Yeah. So, you know, in that way. So we choose all the time. You know, we choose all the time. And I think that's so important. It's so interesting. I, you know, we've been reading this Magdalene book. And um, in this book, Megan Watterson, the author, talks about the darkness and the light. And she talks about the, the unconditional love that is pure source, but she talks about the womb and how our being is created in the dark. You know, we think about going back to the womb where it all begins. It's in darkness. It's in darkness. Wow. And all of a sudden, the I've light. I never happens. thought of that. Wow. That is a beautiful, beautiful concept because it, it's true. Yeah. And it really is about integrating the darkness of who we are into the light right yeah. because the darkness is simply the absence of light that's right. all darkness is it's the absence of light wow. yeah she also in one of the sections that i recorded yesterday for next week she talks about um and i'm, I'm paraphrasing what she said here you're lucky if you get to die before you're killed meaning that you have get these moments in your life where you get to kind of die you before you actually do die like you have that moment transform or die where you're facing a situation in the in, in, in looking at square in the eyes and you have to make that decision you know and so and and those those moments as traumatic as we can say they are they're actually one of the most magical moments because in that situation where you have to make a decision very quickly that's where you find your magic and your power because you know you always know where, where to go you always know where you should go and sometimes we don't we second guess ourselves or we play the pity party but in that moment where you have to make fast fast action 
your soul always knows and you go there, you do it, you transform in that instant, it happens. And so there is such a magic in these, these moments in our life that in the West, we perceive as like bad, but are they bad? I mean, I was saying yesterday, we've talked about it. My, the former yoga that I practice is a very intense form of yoga. It looks like Cirque du Soleil sometimes. It's, it's demanding a lot of the body. And so, um, but one of my original teachers, David Greig, he taught me such a valuable lesson. And I don't even know if I've ever told him that like he changed my perception because he would get so excited. So in the Mysore room, you would have these like 22 year old girls who are athletic fit. They could do handstands easily, put their leg behind their head easily. And that didn't seem to really interest him that much. Okay, next posture. But when an elderly man would come in who was overweight and couldn't touch his toes, David would get so excited. He'd be like, okay, now we have something to work with. Now this is where the juice is. This resistance, this friction, these opposing forces, this is where it gets interesting. And so I have taken that, I would watch him and I'd be like, that's such a interesting perspective. And so it taught me as a teacher and as a student myself, when this resistance comes, whether it's in my practice or what the practice is for to help you for life, that's where the juice is. That's where there's something interesting. The gold is there, not the easy stuff. The easy stuff is boring. That's boring. But the, but the obstacles, the hard stuff, that's interesting. That's where things happen. That's where magic happens. And I am so, we have a student um, at Ashtanga Atlanta who has several palsy. And this student will never, probably never finish primary series. And we have students in the shala that are practicing third series, super advanced series. But I will, I always tell the new students, the beginner students, the most advanced student at our shala is the student that has several palsy because he already has all these obstacles he's coming in with in the practice. And he's got a great attitude. He works hard. And that's what's interesting. And that's what's beautiful is to, to watch him practice is because wow, yeah. it's gorgeous. It's he's taken that what we would perceive as something bad or, or annoying. And he's used it as a tool, as that magic to find himself. And he is literally one of the the most in that Mysore room, he is like the hardest working student in there. He never complains. He, he always has a smile on his face. And, and I, yeah, it's, it's, if we could change our perspective of things like this and see them as opportunities instead of something that's, you know, bad luck or, or just awful, then how much better and how much cooler would humanity be? Exactly. Everything is an opportunity. Everything, you know, and again, I was just, uh, you know, as you were talking, just reminded of another thing with the spider magic. It's all about interconnectedness, which is about the web again, you know, that, that connects us all. As I said, the web of light, light. So it connects us all. We are so interconnected. We are so intrinsically interconnected. There's nothing that can stop us from connecting with each other if we choose to. All we have to do is open up our heart. And we really have to make it so. Maybe what we should do is a, is a whole series on manifestation as well. Yeah. Because that's really, yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I'll let's do that. On that too. We could bring her on as well because, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is she doing something on manifestation? Yeah, she's reading a, ma- a manifestation book on our channel. We could bring her into it too and talk more. Yeah, That'd absolutely. Cool. Yeah. yeah, I think that because I could. Because it really is. Carry on. No, that's what I say, because I think this is where we need to be looking now as humanity is not just that, oh, let's look at all the bad stuff that's happened in the world and boo-hoo-hoo and the matrix. Now let's take our power back. Well, you know what we don't realize is we are manifesting all the time anyway. Yeah. You know, you get up in the morning, you go to the kitchen, you're manifesting a cup of coffee. Yeah. But it's something where it's, it's become so like a ritual for us that we don't realize we're doing it, you know. Um, and we don't realize that we're manifesting all the nonsense that comes along as well. So as we open up our hearts to a different reality and a different consciousness, so we train ourselves and teach ourselves how to manifest differently as well. I've got one of my, one of my programs is on conscious creation which is the manifestation. So it's really teaching people how to tread out a different pathway in your brain, yeah. how to perceive things differently. So it's really, it's the, it's the energy first, 
action second, not action first, and then it'll be all right. No. I've got to feel yeah. so all right within me. And man, and I've got to like be so excited about the fact that even though it's not there yet, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there. And that feeling, you know, and that, it's like, I knew when, when we began Aquarius Rising Africa, oh boy, there was not a cell in my body that doubted what we were doing was the right thing. I knew that I had to, the day, I mean, it wasn't just a particular day. I woke up saying, this isn't the YouTube channel. I'd been wanting to start a YouTube channel for a while, but hadn't quite known which direction. And I was like, Mah, this is it. Called up morning. I said, we're doing this. He went, absolutely. So, you know, without knowing where it was going to head and what direction it was going to take, I knew what I wanted to expose initially. And I also knew from past experience how when you start something and your heart's in the right place, source just opens up every door that needs to be opened up. Yeah, And I mean, look at this, year and a half later, here we are, having the most incredible, I mean, I'm so blessed to have Jessie on our channel. I mean, we just did the most incredible session with her just before you um, on the Blood Diamonds. Mm -hmm. and I saw just, that. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. wow. I mean, that lady is, the, the exposure she is bringing, and I want to tell you, it's like literally... She's only just scratching the surface. Yeah. And we thought we'd heard all the horror of horrors. I think she said to me, Chantel, she called me Chantel. <laughs> she says, you're going to see, we're going down some very deep holes now. And I went, okay, we're right there with you. And just got to see what this is all about for us and for our viewers and what have you. But I know that this is what I'm born for. Yeah. Oh, for and sure. Meeting yeah. you. And meeting you, you know, people like yourself. And having these amazing discussions that we can have through this beautiful interconnectedness, this beautiful web of light that we are, that we've spun for ourselves, so to speak, not to catch people and eat them, but to maneuver along and use it as, a, as this beautiful grid that we navigate our way, that we all understand that we are part of this one beautiful, huge collective consciousness and that we are all created in the image of God. And that, for me, is a very beautiful thing to understand and to get to know. So it really is about having, when your heart is in the right place, when your intention is in the right place, God at, or source, whatever you choose to call it, has your back in the most beautiful ways. So Absolutely. that, for me, is super amazing when we, when we are able to do that. Yeah. Do you know, um, when I started my channel, I thought for sure, this was like two years ago. I can't believe it's been two years. I thought for sure for the rest of my life, I was going to be a Mysore teacher. And I had just um, started my own program um, where I was the, the main director of the program. And I, I, it was in the suburbs. So I would drive every morning to the suburbs. I would teach Mysore drive back. That was my life. Ashtanga yoga was my actual life. And I thought for the rest of my life, this is what I'm going to do. I'm a great philosophy teacher. I'm a good Mysore teacher. Like this is my career. And then when we were forced to lock down, to shut down um, the studio where I had my program was a new studio. And so they, that studio could not survive the lockdown. So that meant my program was done and it wasn't my choice. And so again, that tr you're talking about the YouTube channel when that happened, it was like, okay, well, what am I going to do now? And I started my channel and I've been thinking about doing a channel as well, but it was just going to be more of a storytelling channel um, for this, just for fun, just from stories from the South. And then eventually I got to the point where I was like, I need to use my research to expose the truth because part of the yoga too is seeing the truth of the illusion. And if I, but it's amazing. You're right. It's like, if you follow your intention, if you follow your gut and what you think you should do, instead of just wallowing in despair, the universe is all God is always going to guide you and be with you. And I am so grateful right now. Like I'm so freaking grateful to have this platform because of people like you and because of people that I've met on this journey that I feel like I've known for life. I mean, I know we've lived lives together before Shanti, but like, you know, it's that reconnected, you know, it's magic. It's the fact that we can 
we know these 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 applications, these platforms were probably created for no, more nefarious purposes, but we are using them for good purposes. We're using the tool of the internet to reconnect everyone, and 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 to and, and it's even the people watching right now that. I even my mother said to me the other day, she was like, I just can't get over how kind all the people are in your comment section. And I was like, I know, mom, it's like all the, they're so kind. And the, like, it, they're part of this too. And that's that web of connection, not just for those that have that our faces are out there, but for every person who leaves those comments too. It's all a part of that soul connectiveness that in, in that, um, yeah, that's it's really beautiful. Deep. It's beautiful. It, and, you, you know, and, and it's it's true what your mom says, you know. There are just so many, there are, you know, for every now and again, you're going to get your little trolls and, mm -hmm. you know, who are in a bad mood and just feel like taking it out on someone. Um, but the majority of people are beautiful. The comments, and, you know, it's such a beautiful little tribe that we formed, you mm -hmm. know, um, over the over the past 18 months or so that we've been going. And you, you get to you get to see them, you get to recognize them, you get to know them, you know, they become regulars, then we become friends on Facebook and then on Twitter and, you know, stuff like that. So it is absolutely amazing to see how many beautiful people are in this world from so far, from Japan. I mean, there's people from Japan on our channel, you know, a lot of Americans. Australians, New Zealanders, of course, South Africans and stuff, but all across the globe, it's just beautiful to meet through this beautiful web of light, this interconnectedness, this understanding that we all have. We want, we want the truth. We want healing. We want our world to be a better place. The support we receive, you know, and, you know, when we expose such dark, nasties that that happen you know um especially with the overcomers um people that have been literally to hell literally yeah. to hell and live it's not even a place that your soul fries in eternally they've lived on a physical level the worst possible abuse yeah the worst possible experiences um the craziness that they must have in their mind because for me, I'm an, I'm an empath for sure. And, and I literally feel, I mean, I, I, I often say, I don't need to have experienced what you've experienced, but I totally feel your emotion. That's what makes me a good healer because yeah. I feel it. But the gift I have is I don't take it on. But I got to say with a lot of the stuff, it's hard not to take it on. I've got to go and have a lovely dip in the ocean. I get on my wheel and I whiz around. I've got music. I take an Epsom salts bath. Yeah. Sometimes I just weep and weep and weep just at, at just the, the, the pain and the sadness of what yeah. people have been through. But at the end of the day, it's so beautiful to wake up and I'll go and check the comments in the channel and what have you and the encouragement we receive and the gratitude that people have for the work we do. It's just amazing. And I want to just say thank you to everyone who's there because I don't think our viewers realize how important that is that yeah. we have them as support. So thank I, you yeah. guys, every one of you. For sure, all the all the great comments that I read on my channel, too, and I'm sure we all have same the same viewers. I think we all share the same the same yeah. viewers. Our our community, you know, it's all this. We're all doing the same thing. <laughs> but um, when I see the comments, you guys, yeah, you have no because we do get those trolls, and sometimes it does get daunting when your face is out there. Um, Shanti and I both have experienced some real scary stuff. Um, just because our face is out there, where it's become a little too personal. Um with uh yeah so so it, we are taking a risk and so when you guys who leave these beautiful comments it it makes it worth it because that's why that's why we're doing this we're not doing this because you know we want to we want to roll around in the darkness we're doing this because we know humans are the light too and you guys are part of that yeah. and and part of making this world the world and you know it's interesting you talk about feeling the emotions because i know in the law of one it talks about when we going from third density to fourth density, what happens in fourth density is that they have what they call like a collective memory bank. So when once we're in fourth density, it's not going to be necessary for every human being to experience every situation because we will have a collective memory bank where we will be able to tap into somebody else's experiences to experience that lesson for ourselves as well. And I think that's what we're starting to do with the, the empath and the telepathy and actually feeling um when you see somebody in pain or you hear their story actually being able to bring yourself 
so it's usually you don't even really do it on purpose. It just kind of happens where you bring yourself to that place yeah. where you're experiencing that emotion with them. And, and, and that that's beautiful. You said that Shanti, because I think we are going, cause we are, we all are connected. We all are from the same light. We all are. So, th- so why not be it? You know, that's, we're not separate. We're not alone. We're not, you know, Absolutely. and, and, and that's a beautiful thing that we're able to share those experiences, share joy too, you know, being able to share in somebody else's joy to hear your friends, Absolutely. you know, got a good job or got proposed to or something and actually feel that happiness, pure happiness for them. You know, like how beautiful is that? How amazing is that? And I will say too, on my channel, I noticed my, the viewers being kind to each other like ca- talking yeah. with each other and like how beautiful is that like that's you guys are amazing everybody watching right now you you all are rock stars and you're just as much a part of our platforms as we are you know so so yes it's, it's beautiful it's beautiful and i actually want to know i'm going to ask this of, of my channel if anybody watching if you've ever gotten um bitten by a pretty uh rocking spider that that sent you into kind of a tailspin as far as like transform or die and and um, i'm not asking you to show pictures of your scars if they're in inappropriate areas but if you <laughs> i'm not saying pictures of that either yes. you can use your imagination listen listen <laughs> maybe tmi but every time a new person has had to see me naked i have to explain what that is on my ass so <laughs> <laughs> I would love to know the same. Actually, I was actually going to ask the question earlier on. I'm glad you asked it. So has anyone out there experienced one of these? Doesn't necessarily have to be a spider, maybe even a snake bite that, you know, anything that has taken you close to leaving the earth plane where you've decided to stay and use the medicine. You know, I think a lot of us don't realize what the medicine is. But maybe now that we've had this conversation, um, it'll awaken that in other people as well as to what medicine they were given or they've been using without, without maybe even realizing that they've been using it. So that'll be an interesting, an yeah. interesting convo. You were, anointed. Well. you were anointed by, if you're anointed by a spider or a snake, yeah, snake bites are serious as well. Um, yeah. Like I said, as little girl, as little girl, we had to, um, what was the rhyme? Uh, right on, uh, Yellow on black, you better step back. Red on yellow could kill a fellow. So we had to learn these rhymes as kids to know snakes, poisonous snakes. And we have the copperheads here, the rattlesnakes. Um, so yeah, it, it's it's so even if it's a snake bite, if you were anointed by a snake, let us know because how yeah. cool is that? Like it's it's cool. Like, oh cool. Like I actually got anointed by this 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 in- insect or a reptile or whatever it is that, you know, it, it was, it was, it came at the right moment to give me what I needed. Exactly. Um, that exactly. spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. It was medicine. It's um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, and I know in the Ashtanga practice, we call our practice, our prescription, that it's your prescription. And so sometimes these things that are interesting, they're, they're just your prescription to get you to the next stage. So, well, Shanti, this was so fun. And I, let's let's do a, let's do the series. Let's let's get I know on your channel we're gonna be doing a, the Rock of the Catacombs series. And so let's do Yes. And you doing wellness Wednesday every second a week with us anyway. There's the whole yoga and that that as well. But I would love to do this. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. offline and let's um you guys let us know too down below if that's you know, we'll we'll get Catherine involved as well. And other, you know, just let us know because this is the the whole new world we're 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 moving into and these these secrets, these it's not really secrets, but these practices have been around for a long time. And so now we're we're finally embracing them. Um humanity is finally, finally, it takes humanity we're a little slow sometimes, but we're finally like <laughs> starting to figure Embracing it out. It. We we right here on the on the leading edge and the <laughs> cutting edge of this kind of stuff. So whoever's uh joining us, uh, standing side by side with us, uh, please, you know, let us know. And whatever ideas you guys have for us to do uh, shows on and stuff like that, love to hear about it and let's do it. Yeah, for for sure. 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 You guys go and subscribe to, I'm going to obviously put all of Shanti's links down in the, down in the description box below. Of course, you guys know her for Aquarius from Aquarius Rising Africa, but they have a new channel called Solutions by Aquarius Rising Africa, where it's going to be taking a bit of a different approach to solutions versus what you mainly see on Aquarius Rising Africa, where it's, uh, 
like a lot of exposure, right? Um, and then I'm also going to put your links to your courses below as well, because um, if yeah, you guys are looking right. for an incredible healer to help you, again, the healer is the conduit for you to start to, so if you need someone personally, just offline without anybody around one-on-one, -on -one, Shanti's your girl. So I will put her links down in the description box below for that as well. And I feel like I need to give a special shout out to Mornay because Mornay is literally one of the most beautiful human beings out there. You and Mornay are like, like just so powerful together. And so what an incredible opportunity to have the two of you in our lives. So I thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Bryce. And yeah, absolutely. Huge shout out to Mornay. Um, you know, he's, he's been on my journey, part of my journey for 12 years now. Uh, in this life anyway, <laughs> many lives before, uh, no doubt about that, but he really is one very special human mm -hmm. and does a lot for humanity. He's fantastic with especially kids and animals. I mean, just such a very special soul. Mm -hmm. So yeah, very blessed to have him and he'll definitely be joining us more and more on these, um, I mean, discussions, channels, I don't know what we even call it, but um, yeah, oh, wow. for sure. Yes. Yeah, power. Yes. I love that. Power. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys are having an awesome Wednesday and just keep your head up, guys, because literally the best is yet to come. One of my favorite quotes ever is, and probably I'm going to paraphrase it, is how cool is it knowing that some of your best days haven't even happened yet? I love it. I love it. That, yes. that is cool. Yeah. That is cool. Your best days haven't even happened yet. The best is truly yet to come. And may today be that day for all of you. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Love you guys. Exactly. Bye. God bless you all. Take good care. Cheers, guys.